In the Naming Alkenes podcast, we're going to go over the IUPAC rules for naming alkenes. I suspect you're going to get sick of the same definition for every single family and functional group that we go over this semester, but this is how we're going to start every single new functional group. Alkenes are a family of hydrocarbons that contain a double bond, and that's your key word right there. Double bond, notice the difference. We've studied alkenes before. Those are single bonds. And there is an A in place of the E. So the name in itself is going to tell us a lot about the structure. So if you have a double bond and it's all carbons and hydrogens, it's an alkene. So you have two pairs of shared electrons now, or four total electrons that are shared between two carbon atoms. We consider alkanes to be unsaturated, meaning they don't have the maximum number of hydrogens that you can have. So what I, I think it's kind of tough to picture this is an alkane if we had ethane, would have six hydrogens on it. Okay, well, how do we make a double bond? How do we make this into an alkene? What we're going to have to do is remove two of these hydrogens. That will leave single valence electrons um, on each of these carbons, both of which are going to become part of a shared pair of electrons, creating that double bond. So when we talk about the generic formula for this, this is a much better picture than mine, um, we say a certain number of carbons, N, and to determine how many hydrogens we're going to have, we just say 2 times N. If you remember from alkanes, we added the additional 2, but we don't need to now because alkenes have two less hydrogens than an alkane. So the other thing I want you to notice just looking at the structure is instead of having what we would have considered a tetrahedral structure, so you have four atoms on a central atom, um, what we have now are three atoms that are equidistant on a central atom. So each of these carbons is going to be a trigonal planar geometry instead of tetrahedral. So that double bond is going to change the shape of the molecule as well. All right, so let's go over the IUPAC rules for naming. We are going to start in the same place we did for alkanes. So that's the beauty of organic chemistry. It's just so systematic. It's the same rules. Um, you just change the ending for them. So we're going to start with the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the double bonds. You have to make sure, however you count these, that you're including the double bond in your longest chain or you don't have an alkene. Instead of using an A-N-E ending like we did with alkanes, we're now going to change the ending to E-N-E. -E. So we're going to use our prefixes, meth, eth, pro, bute, and if it has a double bond, we'll end it with ene, methene. Well, actually, methene doesn't work. That was a dumb example. I'm sorry. Ethene, propene, butene. And remember, your prefix is determined by the number of carbons in the longest chain that has the double bond. If you have an alkene that is four carbons long or more, so starting with um, butene, you're going to have to number to show the location of the double bond. We'll do an example that shows you what I'm talking about. You have to say where the double bond is. Um, you are going to give the carbon in the double bond the lowest possible number. So that's going to determine whether you're counting from the left or the right, the top or the bottom. Your double bond takes precedence over any branches for numbering. So if you have alkyl branches like methyl or ethyl, you're going to give priority to the double bond first. If you have a halogen, bromine, fluorine, iodine, again, you're going to give precedence to that double bond. The double bond gets the lowest number possible. And finally, you're going to get sick of hearing this, but we're going to locate and name the branches. The rules are the same as they always are. You're going to give, um, as you're naming them, you're going to make sure that those branches are listed alphabetically. Um, you are going to say if you have two methyl groups, dimethyl or trimethyl, and you're going to try to give them the lowest numbers possible after you have numbered your double bond with the lowest number possible. All right, so let's do some examples here. In our first example in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to make this our blue example, I'm going to start by drawing a line through the longest chain of carbons that includes a double bond. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It uh, looks like we have a three-carbon structure here. So um, in this situation, um, I'm going to double-check if I need to number this or not. I can either number this, one, two, three, um, or this double bond could be in this position, and we would number it 
one, two, three. Either way, wherever that double bond is, it's going to be on position number one for our carbon. So in this situation, because it's less than four carbons, I don't have to number this. So I just have to count the carbons, which is three. So my prefix is prop, and I end that with ENE -E to signal that I have a double bond presence. So the name of this molecule is propene. To call it one propene would be an unnecessary addition to the name. It can't be in any other position. So I like to call this my Chandler principle. When you're thinking about, do I need to number the location of my double bond? Ask yourself, can the double bond be anywhere else? All right, in our next example, drawing a line through the longest continuous chain that contains the double bond, okay, counting the number of carbons, one, two, three. Again, notice these are the exact same molecule, but here we have the double bond in a different location. So we've kind of swapped it. We've turned it on its side. In this situation, it doesn't matter where we start counting. We always give the lowest priority to the double bond. Okay, so again, it's prop, double bond, tells us ENE -E ending. So these are actually the same molecule. Um, when we get into making isomers and we get a little further along, be careful uh, that you are looking to see. These are in space. They can turn, and these are actually the same molecule. All right, in our next example, we're going to draw the a line through our longest continuous chain of carbons that contains a double bond. Done. Now I need to worry about numbering my chain so that the double bond gets the lowest number possible. Well, obviously I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four carbons is the prefix but, and because there's a double bond present, we end the name in ENE. -E. Now, this double bond could be between carbons one and two, but it could also be between two and three. So I'm going to have to number the location. I'm going to have to tell the, the location of the double bond in the name. So this is one butene. Um, again, it could be between two and three. It could not be here between three and four because we would count this in this direction, giving it position one again. If this is confusing to you, don't worry. We'll practice in class, and it will become second nature to you. In our last example, down the lower left-hand corner, we're again going to draw a line through the longest continuous chain of carbons. We do have a methyl group here, potentially, so we're going to make sure that we count in a couple different directions to make sure that we're getting the lowest number possible for the double bond. So I could count this direction. That would be one, two, three, four, including the double bond. Or I can count in this direction, one, two, three, four. Because those are equal, it doesn't matter which one I use. Um, so no matter what, my chain is four carbons long. So it's going to have the prefix but, and there's a double bond. So I'm going to end it with ENE, -E, noting that it's an alkene. Because this double bond can either be between the first and second carbon or the second and third, I'm going to have to go ahead and number because it can be in another location. So this is where it gets a little tricky, and we're going to have to just count until we get this right. So we could count for our longest chain. I'm using the red one as my longest chain. That makes the most sense to me. One, two for the double bond, counting from left to right. Or if we're going in the other direction, one, two if we're going from right to left. Those are equal to me. So no matter what, this is going to be two butene. But the question is, can I number that? Since both directions are equal, can I pick a direction that gives my branch the lowest number possible? And if I count from left to right, that means that this methyl group is on carbon number two. If I count from right to left, that means my methyl group is on carbon number three. So the correct way to count this is first to worry about that double bond, get it in the lowest possible carbon then worry about getting your branches in the lowest number possible. So we're going to follow this green counting left to right so that we have it in position two. So this is two methyl two butene. And remember, dashes between letters and numbers, commas between numbers.